Autodesk Fusion 360 tutorial, I'm going to show you how to model a simple living hinge for use on a laser cutter. We'll do this by using user parameters and we'll also use the sheet metal command so we can see what our model will look like. To do this, you need to have some living hinge swatches that you test to find the minimum bend radius of the material you're using. Then you'll make a sheet metal rule that will have that bend radius in. I've already done this for you and you can see the video on living hinge test swatches to see different patterns and how far they bend. The first thing we'll do is create a new component. We'll call this hinge. Then we'll create a sketch. I'll create a sketch on this plane and I'm gonna draw a line. The first line will be 100 millimeters. Then I'm gonna press shift A to draw a three point arc. Then I'll draw one more line across and I'll also make that 100 millimeters. I'll make sure that these are vertically constrained on top of each other. Next, I'm gonna give this arc a radius. I know that my three millimeter plywood with the smallest pattern bends at about 10 millimeters. So I wanna make sure that the radius is above 10 millimeters. So I'll say 12. Now I have a fully constrained sketch and I can finish my sketch. Next, we need to go to the sheet metal workspace. You can click that on the top. Then we need to modify the sheet metal rules. In your library, you'll probably only have metal rules. You see that I have an eighth inch plywood rule. I created that rule just from the default steel. You can do the same thing by making a new rule by hovering, clicking this button, and it'll make a new rule. So now this says eighth inch plywood with the one here, and I'll call this demo. Next, you wanna put in the actual thickness of your plywood. You should measure this with calipers and know the thickness. Then you need to put in the bend radius. I put in 10 millimeters because that's what will work with three millimeter plywood and this cut pattern. Go ahead and save it and then close. And then we're going to make a new flange. And then we'll click this profile and our distance will be 150. And then you wanna make sure that instead of steel, you pick our new plywood demo rule, and then you say, okay. Now we have what looks like a photo album or book. So we want this to be able to bend, but plywood doesn't do that. So now we'll make our living hinge. In order to make the pattern of the living hinge, we'll go to modify, unfold. We'll click one face, and then it automatically unfolds the pattern. We'll say, okay. Next, we need to create a sketch, so I'll click Create Sketch. I'll click the face of this piece of wood. Then I'm gonna project in some sketch entities. I'm gonna project in these four points. Then I'm gonna say, okay. We can go ahead and hide the body now so it's not in the way. Next, I'll draw some lines. And I wanna switch on construction lines, so I'll do that. I'm gonna draw a line from here to here. And I'm gonna draw a line from here to here. I'm gonna draw a line from here to here in the midpoint. And then I also want to draw a line straight down the middle. So now I have some guides for what I need to do. Next, make sure you turn off construction lines, then press line. I wanna draw some lines at angles because I wanna put my own constraints on. Press escape to draw a new line, then press L to draw another line. Sometimes you get this constraint of parallel, just delete it, then press L again and I wanna draw some lines down here, and one more line here. Notice these lines don't have any constraints, so we'll add some. I wanna make them collinear with this top line, so these top three lines should be collinear. I wanna make these two lines symmetric, so I'll click symmetry, and I'll click this one, and this one, and then the center line. And then I wanna make one of them horizontal, perfect. Now we need to make some user parameters. So we'll go to modify, change parameters. Our first parameter will be ply. This is the thickness of our material and it should match whatever sheet metal rule you created. Next, I'll make a new user parameter and I'll call it gap. This will be the gap in between the slits we cut with the laser cutter to make the living hinge. And for this pattern, it will be six millimeters. And then we'll also add ideal bar height, and this will be 1.5 millimeters. So this is the ideal spacing of the little slats that will make up our living hinge, and we'll press OK. So now we need to use those user parameters in our model. So I'll go from this point to this point, and I'll type gap. 
Then I'll go from this point to this point, and I'll type gap. I'll go from this point to this point, and this will also be gap. These points here need to go past the edge of the board because we want to cut all the way through the board. So I'll dimension them off to the side, and you can make them one millimeter or 0.5. It's up to you. It just needs to be a little bit past. Then I'll move this point over past the line, then press D, click both points, move up, type 0.5. These points want to be directly below the edge. So we'll do that. We'll click the vertical constraint and I want to click this point and that. And then I want to do the same thing over here. So I'll click this inside point and this one. And if it snaps up to the top, just say control or command Z and then make sure you move it closer over. Sometimes the vertical constraints can be tricky. So then I'll click here and there, and now it's vertically constrained. Make sure you move these two points so they're hovering across this symmetry line. Notice we can still move this up and all of these points can still move side to side. We want these gaps to be centered on these lines. So we're gonna use a trick of geometry. We'll go get our construction lines. We'll type L and we're gonna go from this midpoint to this point, and then from this midpoint to this point. Then we'll click equals and we'll make both these lines equal. Now it kicked it way far down. So we'll go ahead and bring this up and then we can move this one over. And then we're gonna do the same thing with this one. Then we'll do the same thing with this line. So we'll use our construction lines. We can draw from here to here and from here to here. And then we can draw from here to this point and from here to this point. Once again, we'll use the equal constraint and we'll make both of these equal. And then we can make both of these equal. Now everything should be centered. I can bring this back up. Now we need to figure out how far this gap should be. We know the ideal gap. We put that in our user parameters as 1.5, but we need to calculate what gap it will be for this distance for our living hinge. In order to do that, we're gonna make a driven dimension. So press D, click this bottom point, then click the top point, then move over to the left, click. Fusion will give you a warning saying this is a driven dimension. Click OK, and then you can see it here, 40.977. Then go to Modify, User Parameters, and we're gonna add one. We're gonna say Hinge Height, and then this will be that driven dimension. It will be 40.977. This is a great trick, but unfortunately, if you change your design, you have to come in and retype this value. So then we'll say, okay. Then we need to make a user parameter that will be unitless. So make sure you click no units. And then this will be number of bars. So this will be how many bars going across our hinge. And this expression will be hinge height divided by ideal bar height, that gives us a value of 27.318. That's not a very good number, and we want this number to be even. So we'll put this whole expression into parentheses, and then we're going to say round, add another parentheses, go to the end. We want this to be divided by two, and then we'll add another parentheses. And so now we get 14 and then we'll times it by two. So this gives us the next highest round even number. And if you wanna see that expression, it's right here. Round hinge height divided by ideal bar height divided by two times two. And we'll say, okay. Now that we know the number of bars, we can actually find the bar height. So what we'll do is we'll add a new user parameter and we'll call this bar height, and this will be hinge height divided by num bars. So we're really close to our ideal number because we round it up to the next even number, our gap will always be a little bit smaller, but it'll be really, really close. Then we'll say, okay, now we can dimension this distance and it will be bar height. Next, we need to create a mirror 
and we'll click mirror and we want to mirror these top three lines. And if you're having trouble selecting them, because sometimes it'll select in the back, just click and hold and then you can hover over which line you want. Click and hold, then hover over which line you want. And then I selected the back one. I don't want that one. I want to click and hold and this one. And then the mirror line will be this center line. And I'll say, okay. Now we could make a pattern in this sketch, but that means there's going to be a lot of calculations in Fusion. So what we want to do is finish the sketch. Then we'll create a new sketch. You can show the body again to make sure that you create the sketch on that body face. Then hide the body, press P to project, and we want to project the other sketch in. And once again, you can click and hold to only pick the lines that you want. Click and hold, then hover on the lines you want. We want this one. And then of course we want these lines down here at the bottom. Click and hold to get the lines that you want. Click and hold, and then hover over which one you want. Then I'll say, okay. And now what I can do is I can hide this other sketch because I don't need it right now. Next, we'll go ahead and create that rectangular pattern. So I'll click rectangular pattern. What do I want to pattern? I want to pattern all these top ones. Then I want to go this direction. So now I know I'm going this way. Make sure you select spacing instead of extent. The distance will be bar height times two because there's two gaps. And then the quantity will be num bars divided by two. Click OK. You'll notice that everything calculates evenly between these arbitrary gaps we made earlier. After you have the rectangular pattern, show the body again. Press P to project again. Then when you're projecting, instead of picking specific entities, click body. Then you can click this exterior body and say OK. And then we'll finish our sketch. So now if you notice, we have a sketch that has all of these pieces. So if I hide the body, I have a perfectly fine file that I can use to cut out of my laser cutter. So when we go to the manufacturer workspace, you can use this file to cut out your laser cut piece. But there's a nice thing you can do in Fusion. What if you want to see what this will look like with all the cuts cut out? We can easily do that if we go to the surface workspace. And we create an extrusion. We'll select all of these entities in the middle. And then we can deselect these ones because we don't need them. Our direction will be symmetric. And then our extent type will be distance. And our distance, we can orbit to see. And we want to go all the way. We can show our body. As long as you're going through the body, it doesn't matter where you are. And then we'll say, OK. Then we're going to go ahead and create thicken. And what are we going to thicken? Well, we're going to thicken all of these. So all of those will be thickened. And then I know the curve of my laser cutter is 0.127, so I'll make it 127, and I'll say OK. Then I go to the solid workspace, and I click Combine, and the target body will be this body. Then the tool bodies will be all of these components. And then the cut will be the operation, and I don't need to keep the tools, so I'll check uncheck that. Click OK. Now it makes cuts through the body. And if I want to see what this looks like when it's all done, I can go back to the sheet metal workspace and I can refold my faces. And now you can see that I have this really cool pattern. I can see what it looks like and model other parts around it while I'm making my model. Then I always have my sketch right here that I can use in the manufacturer workspace. So hopefully you can use this technique to make living hinges in your laser cut projects.